Jackson. Lori is a registered nurse and she's also our diabetes educator um, at the hospital. And today um, we're going to be talking about holidays and preparing for winter holidays, food, fuss, and fun. Everyone's favorite topic. And it's also National Diabetes Month. That's another reason we're doing this. So I'm going to turn this over to Lori and um, we, we look forward to your, to your presentation. Great. Thank you so much, June. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Lori Gilhausen. I'm a registered nurse. I've been at the hospital and a nurse since 1983. Um, oh, no, 87 is when I became a nurse. Um, I've been doing diabetes education and uh, for like the last 15 years or so. Our, seat, our certification is now called uh, Diabetes Care in Education Specialist because we put a lot of emphasis in the care. So it's one of those things that you want to check in with the care people when things change, you know, when you first get diagnosed, it's a great time to come check in, learn about all the steps there are to do, whether it's type one, type two, whether it's pre-diabetes even, there are some steps that we can go over to, because this is a lifelong process. Diabetes and pre-diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, heart disease are all lifelong diseases. And as your body changes over time, as science gets better over time, things change. You know, things change. So that's where it helps to check in. When you've had changes, like you were at the goal, we were doing great, and all of a sudden something comes up. It's another good time to check in with the care and education specialist. You know, yes, you know how to use your meter, but the care and education piece is how do you use those tools to get to where your goals are? You know, how are the meds working? When do your meds work? When do we make changes? That's where we work with your care team again. Sometimes as life goes on, our people that support us change. You know, you had a team with a group of people that help keep you up on task and with goals and could understand what's going on. And now there's a new person helping you out. That's another time for all of us to come sit down together and look and see where things will work better for you. The hardest part in the diet in the holiday season or any time while you're living with diabetes you're not your disease you're just living with this on top of everything else on your plate is understanding how it changes okay it's not your fault <laughs> uh, when everything works right in life you've got lots of cells that are making insulin your body takes anything you hand it and handles it whether you have diabetes or not, your blood sugar is constantly up and down and up and down and steady on and up and down and steady on. And that's for everybody. When you have diabetes, you start losing those cells that make insulin. And those, those numbers start to stay up higher longer. So like in pre-diabetes, you might have all those cells, but for whatever reason, instead of your insulin coming out fast and keeping you down safe, you go up and you stay up there for a bit before the insulin catches up. So you got five or 10 years of pre-diabetes. Some people stay in pre-diabetes all the time. Some people, it's a five to 10 year before you roll over. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your water, <clears throat> your walk are all pieces that help keep blood sugar more manageable. Muscle training, you know, how many times do we lift those grocery bags at shopping times right now? Or when you're moving stuff around the house, moving those muscles, moving, you know, getting your heart beat up in a walk, or just plain moving, period. Some people were lucky you moved from one part to the next part, that still works. And every trip you can make builds strength. So when you've got lots of cells taking care of business, what's making it go up? life, how your body used it, didn't use it, our water, our walk, stress, sleep. We all forget that sleep is a big impact on everything. Everything <laughs> depends on getting a good chunk of sleep. Over time, for type twos, your cells start to wear out. So by the time your blood sugars are high enough in a fasting state to be called diabetes, and we call it diabetes early because the whole point is let's preserve what you got left and let's help prevent problems and put them down the road as far as we can go. 
In type one, you get a virus, your body fights the virus off, and then over time, it starts to remove all the cells. So type ones, no matter how great their plate is, no matter how great their walk is, they will always need insulin. No matter how great a type two's walk and diet and plate and plan and stress and all that other management, you can still have highs, lows, and perfects. Okay, that's why we look at that A1C. It's our clue of, hey, in the last three months, how much high, how much low, how much right on time? It's an average. So that's where the people that have those CGMs or your professional use CGM, that'll tell us how much time in this A1C of seven and a half is our time in the target zone. What, what percentage of our time is spent in target zone? When you're at about 70% of the time, you're gonna have about a 7% A1C. But you could also have 70% of your time in way too high, not quite 70, probably more like 40 to way too high, have maybe 20 or 30 way too low and not so much right here and still end up with a pretty A1C. So when you see your providers, we're looking A1C for big picture. We look at when you check your blood sugars, you know, writing them down on a log, you know, your meter is your next best friend. How am I dealing? How is my body using what I'm going through today? What's happening? That's where your meter is so important. And writing it down, and scribbling those little notes because we're now we're until the holidays. And if you just peek outside, if you're up in Ashtabula, it is that cute little sleety, snowy rain stuff. Down in Jefferson, when I left to come up here, it's grass is green and nothing's on the corners. <laughs> and what did we have a couple weeks ago? A few people had like an inch or two of snow on the tops of their cars and different places of us didn't have anything. It's that time of year where that walk that you worked on all summer long, even if it was only walking back and forth to the driveway to get your mail, was activity that helped your blood sugar, helped your blood pressure, helped your stress, helped your depression be a little better. Now we're in this lovely time change. I don't know about you, but I'm still having a hard time with it being black as night in two hours and it's only six o'clock at night. <laughs> but I like to do my yard work at eight and nine at night. So I'm really lost when we lose late night light. Uh, but we're in that transition stage. So some of you out there may have noticed that your blood sugars, no matter what you're doing, are going crazy because it's the time change, the activity change, the food change, and new stressors. It's November, you know? So own what's happening and it's okay. And then let's make some plans because this is the time of year that certain favorites only show up this time of the year. And let's face it, certain foods just make you feel good here. If you feel good here, guess what? It's easier to take that little extra walk. Yeah, it might be icy and cold out there. So let's pick up something in the house that could be weights. It's not the same as watering the garden or picking stuff up out in the yard, but it's moving your muscles, doing the Pilates stuff. You know, when you're putting the groceries away, a couple extra, hey, a little extra tip, check the food labels on things. There's a little more muscle moving, you know, back and forth. Um, making sure you get enough water in the day. The furnace is on, the air is drier, go for water. There's no extra calories there that we have to clean. Um, planning out your meals timing out your stuff. We said food, we've been talking about some fuss, but um, food choices in the winter are kind of hard, but kind of easy. We all have favorites. It's our favorites every day. Uh, think about what you want for your specials, okay? Because like, let's face Thanksgiving dinner, some people do every potato and every carb under the sun and a little bit of meat, <laughs> but if you got stuffing on here too, which would be bread, so there's your stuffing. <laughs> kind of pick what you want out of this. Because I bet a lot of people are like, I really want that piece of pie later. Okay, it's okay. Thanksgiving day, Christmas day, every day. Still eat your first meal of the day. Doesn't matter if your first meal is at eight in the morning or two in the afternoon or six o'clock at night. We all work different shifts. We all have different sleep cycles. You got a first meal, 
four or five hours later, you got your second food choice, drink choice. Four or five hours later, there's your third, and that's okay. But remember, on the day that you're like, hey, we're all gonna go have this big meal down here, still eat your breakfast or first meal, still eat that second meal. Because you don't wanna ever get to one meal starving. Let's face it, you are eating everything on the counter while the good stuff is cooking. And now the good stuff is ready and you're full. And then that can be challenging for your system. So a piece of it is even if like meals, meal times get off kilter when you've got family gatherings, stresses up. So sometimes we stress eat, sometimes we stress drink, you know, more coffee than usual, alcohol maybe. Um, just be aware that alcohol needs to go with food and use your meter if you're checking and be aware that food and that need to go together. Moderation is the key and it's my moderation, maybe not your moderation. <laughs> Maybe it is your moderation. For guys, the moderation is considered two drinks of alcoholic, like five ounce wine, a 12 ounce beer. Um, spirits, the distilled things are like an ounce and a half is the serving. For women, we get one. Um, for guys, they can have two. And that's in the day. Uh, but don't start drinking if you don't already. But it's the time of year where you might enjoy a little bit of wine with dinner with family and friends. Um, but plan out what you're going to eat at that special meal. If you know somebody's most special thing is right there, what do you want to stick on your plate? You know, if, if you know you want that pie later, choose out of here. These are all carbs. So hopefully whoever in the world was doing dinner didn't do sweet potato pie, white mashed potatoes, and peas and corn as your vegetable because these guys are starches, just like your sweet potato is a starch, just like your white potato is a starch. Just like, well, mashed potatoes probably go there more than the baked potato guy, okay? You're allowed to have some, you know, because this is the gas in the gas tank to help your body get through the stress of visiting with family and friends or making sure, oh goodness, I didn't burn it in the oven. <laughs> um, but you wanna make sure that you get a protein out here. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to leave it still in the plastic wrap. Oh, there they are. I was going to say somewhere are the other vegetables. Um, and maybe the fancy sweet potatoes with the brown sugar and the marshmallows only come at a couple of special dinners. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm going to grab. I can have white potatoes any day of the week. I don't always get so-and-so's special sweet potato, whatever. You know, do you really love the stuffing? You know, so maybe you go smaller with the sweet potato so you can have a little more of that stuffing, but load up on the non-starchy veggies, especially if you want to save some room for that piece of pie. You know, if you're going to have a cup of coffee with that piece of pie, what's going in that cup of coffee? This is water, really. But, you know, sometimes a little bit of special stuff in your coffee doesn't hurt the whole thing as badly as we might think, but that's once again, look at your food labels, know what in the world the impact is. Best tool, now granted when you're at someone's house, you're not gonna use your measuring cups. Let's face that. But when you're at home, don't cheat yourself out of food. Don't cheat yourself. If it says a cup, measure out a cup and own it. Enjoy it, have it. Uh, it says half a cup, use the half a cup. Hey, that label says half a cup, but I'm eating a cup. You gotta count this twice. You know, two half cups make a whole. And this is where you learn what your portions look like. I love my food twice because if you're out and about and you really want the corn with those mashed potatoes somewhere, oh, there's the mashed potatoes. About a cup tant, you know? You can kind of eyeball it on that table and say, hey, is that two? Did somebody give you two handfuls, but you only want to do one because you know you want the corn and pea mix? Now, the weird part here is if you had a half a cup of corn and a half a cup of peas, this is 30 grams of carbs. If we did the baked potato the size of the computer mouse, this is 30 grams of carbs. If you did a sandwich, two pieces of bread, 30 grams of carbs, you know, and your meat in the middle of your sandwich no carbs to count. So 
Where do you want to spend your, you know, 45 grams of carbs is middle of the road. Some people are 30, some people like 45, some people like 60. Once in a while, we're all going to draw the smiley on the log sheet when you have that day that goes over, when life says, oh no, we're going to do this instead. Own it. Own it. It's okay. Because the worst thing is when you don't own it, and we go back through with you with your log sheets and go, oh, what was going on here? If it's something special, it's okay. But own it. Because if we see a lot of things off kilter, it without knowing what else was going on, we think, okay, the medicines aren't working as good as they used to. It's time to shuffle the deck. Maybe it was just, hey, I sprained my ankle and now I'm not walking and things have snuck up on me. So let's look at other things we can change. Our food is the easiest part to change. It's the hardest thing to change, but it is the fastest impact. You know, are we drinking our calories or are we eating our calories? You know, you can have that little bit of juice. This is the same sugar as if you ate that same small apple. Yeah, the size that's why they pick it, they should have let it grow, right? You know, but if my blood sugar is too low, I want that juice because I want my body to suck that sugar up really fast and get me back up to 70, 80, 90, you know, if I'm less than 70. If I'm already 200 and I'm like, I'm thirsty, that was good, let me have some more. I just sent my sugar up to 250. And now I'm stuck in more sticky syrup, waiting for my body to catch up and wash it out. That's where that constant thirst comes from. The higher your blood sugar, the more thirsty your body's gonna get. And that's where the tired, you know, it's sludge in there. Your body wants to have things run as smooth as water. And that's where sometimes after you've eaten a meal, how many of those meals that you eat, you have to go take a nap. You know, if you can, right after doing dis dinner, do a little march in place. Do a little bit of strength training, even two to five minutes. Something fall, even if you have to do it in the chair. Let's face it, some days the back and the hips and the knees say no. Sometimes we did have that second plate of goodies and then the waistband says no. <laughs> but if it's only one meal, if you think about a year and you think about three meals a day, never mind our snacks that sometimes equal a meal, we're looking at maybe nine meals out of 900 in an entire year. You know, there's 365 in a year. So wait, that's more than 900 meals in a year. So these three of the holidays are a little rough because let's face it, those treats are here. We're a little bit stress eating or what, everywhere we go, it's food. Everywhere we go, it's food. <laughs> and that's a hard switch. Make some meetings, make some get togethers that are, let's play games instead. You know, let's let's go for a walk together. When was the last time you built a snowman? Even if it's just while you're cleaning the car off and you're putting it on the flower pot. You know, fun things. You know, look at the fun side of things too. Um, that can help. Yeah, there's a lot of fuss at the holidays, a lot of stress, a lot of I want it to be perfect. Or I want to do this, 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 and this, and the situation and what's available makes it hard to do. Just kind of choose a couple of things that are like, these mean the most to me. This is what I want to try to get this year, okay? You can't control anybody else around you. So we've all had that lovely diabetes police people, diet police people in your life that say, you can't have that, you have diabetes. Or you're trying to lose weight or your blood pressure will go through the roof, you know, as we sit there and look at the salt shaker going. Think about those situations ahead of time because most times if someone just said, no, you can't have it, you may not have it in front of them, but then you go behind or later and eat the whole thing instead of the one piece you were planning on. So think ahead about who do I need to have that lovely little talk that says, you know, that doesn't help me. You know, there's enough other stressors going on right now. Enough things off of a routine. Or maybe this is the year you kind of say, I'm gonna to stick to a routine. You know, stick to a wake up time. Try to stick to a, we're going to bed around this time. And let's make adjustments. 
when you've got challenges where things just aren't going great, you know, your meter never gives you a number you want to see. Come see me. Come talk with your doc. We can look at things and see what's working, what's not. Are there things we can change? Because there are. You know, diabetes is the one disease that you're kind of in charge of what goes on the plate. Honest? Yeah. How much goes here? Did it work? You know, whatever you put here, did it last all the way to over here? You know, sometimes the protein side of the plate, hmm, that's what I tried to do here. Oh, I was going to say the chicken is missing. <laughs> you know, the meat side, I have very few colors of meat here. The protein side helps you feel fuller longer. So, you know, make sure you had some of that there. If you didn't have enough protein and you found you were hungry really fast, maybe add a little more. Um, the, the other wonderful thing, what we can do with our plates, smaller, usually works better. Now, not that anyone picked three different veggies up here to put on there, the non-starchy guys, the fibery guys, help fill you up. The protein helps slow things down. And then you've got room for that little bit of carb. And if you eat it at the end, you know, if you think about your stomach being the size of your fist, and you fill the bottom up with those vegetables, and you fill the middle up with that protein, not as much room up at the top for the other stuff. So that's why, you know, the more balance you've got at each meal, at each food choice, with each snack, the slower, more balanced your responses will be. So some other fuss things is, you know, hate fussy recipes, the more processing, sometimes the rougher the food choice is for you. Sometimes it's, oh, I got 10 parties and they're all in the same week. Once again, draw the smiley on that section of the week because don't you know, you got six to eight weeks right now and everything is the second or third week of December. You know, nothing, you know, it just doesn't balance out as well as we would hope. Um, and try to find some fun for this. You know, take the stress, you know, go through that list of like, this is what I'm gonna worry about. Choose the things you can do something about because you can't do anything about some things. So don't let them rob your strength. You know, get in with your doc. It's also open enrollment for insurance. So this is the time of year for these next week or two. If your plan didn't supply your medication needs and your health care needs as best as you were hoping it would, check in and see if there's a better plan. You know, if you were in the donut hole with your prescriptions back in March, see if there's a plan that would put you in the donut hole in November. You know, two months versus nine months is huge with the meds because they can't help you if we're not taking them. You know, always carry a couple extra doses of your meds with you in case you don't get home in time for that dose. Because um, once again, it's hard for them to help you out if they aren't there to help you out. Um, let me think, what else do we want to talk about? Be ready to fix a low blood sugar. The schedule is off, the food is off, stress is off. It's cold and flu season along with COVID season. Uh, when you're sick, your numbers are gonna go up. So don't get mad at your meter. Just kind of go, oh wait, something's cooking. And you know, talk with your doc. Sometimes we'll do telehealth to keep you safe, keep the public safe, you know, just be safe out there. When you're gonna be congregating in tighter spaces, wear a mask if you need to, because it's just with diabetes and blood pressure and heart disease, your body's already struggling just to breathe and move and get you through your day. And then we add a disease process on top of that. So a virus that can knock your socks off. That's why it's so important to be up with your flu shot, your COVID shot. Make sure you're safe with your numbers as best as you can, because that helps your immune system be able to wipe out bugs when we get them, you know, and the safest plate we can do. Um, so let's see, we, we talked about getting some sleep and trying to get through the stress of the season getting through shopping in the grocery store. <laughs> what about alternative sweeteners? Oh, yes. Um, there are lots of things out there that will say this, that, the other for sweeteners. Um, when you're, say you're gonna make some applesauce, 
there. I just made applesauce, you know, I cooked that on the stove and got them all mushy, but it needs a little help. So maybe I wanted to add some cinnamon and nutmeg or whatever, those neat little apple pie slices in here are really good. Um, maybe I want a little more sweet. So if I do a teaspoon, a real, the measuring teaspoon that you would do for a fussy recipe, not my teaspoon out of the silverware drawer, that's four to five grams of carbs, depending on if you rounded it or not. If I use agave juice or stevia or um, maybe a little bit of maple syrup in something, all of those are added sugar. So first you look at the food label to go, okay, this is what I got, because maybe you bought your applesauce already in a jar and look at what already started with it. And then when you add, look at the label, add what you need. You know, uh, some people don't wanna do the artificial sweeteners. Some people are okay with them. It's about volume and amounts, but it, think about it. If it's not like, here's the agave and I'm eating the little piece of fruit or vegetable or whatever agave ends up being, somebody did something to it to make it be that liquid that you're dropping into something. So just count it, you know, the little, the little things for creamer, you know, sometimes that's easier because they got a label that says one little thingy is maybe two grams of carbs. We're not going to worry about two grams of carbs. We don't usually worry up to five, but then knowing that we don't worry at five, if you do something five times, it was five. Now you got 25. So it, it's, it's accumulative through the whole day. So even if, one meal blew the whole week's worth of carbs, fat, salt, whatever. Four or five, six hours later when we're having our next meal, it's your fresh start to start. But like you want to use those other sweeteners. Um, just look at how much you're using and add it up in the total of what's on your plate. Okay, because everything's got a reason for being. Everything brings a different flavor, a different taste, a different, it covers a different need. You know, because some people, the the non the artificials like the saccharin and oh yeah saccharin and oh equal as aspartame, um, Splenda is sucralose, stevia is just stevia, but stevia is a cute little green plant. And when you open that package, it's a cute little white powder. I'm not too sure about that, <laughs> but some cultures take that cute little green plant and dry the leaves and use that as the flavoring. It's a little different than sugar, but when you get to herbs and spices, they all taste different to every different person because all of our taste buds work differently. So once again, it's kind of like, try it out, see what works for you. And anything that comes in a box has a label. And even if it doesn't, you know, our vegetables, we bought them maybe at the um, farm market or at the store, um, you can go online or ask a friend or give me a call and say, hey, will you look that up? Because that's, believe me, a lot of times with the people I'm working with, they say, this is my favorite. And I will go, let's go look it up and find out. So then you know. Because once you know your favorites, you got it. Think about it. If you think about what do you eat every day in a week? What do you eat every week in a month? There's maybe 20, 30 things we eat all the time. So once I learn my favorite loaf of bread, once I learn my favorite bag of carrots, once I learn my favorites, whatever they are, I'm good to go. You know, that's okay. Um, but just know that through the holidays, when you're out there, check out the buffet line before you start filling your plate because there's nothing worse than, yep, fill the whole plate and you get to the last table and you're like, I'd throw this whole plate away for that right there. Look at the line first and see what's there. Holiday tips usually say, you be the one person that brings the veggie tray. Maybe you're the one person that brings that favorite cookie recipe that you wanna have six in the freezer for summer. And then you can take the other 40, because you know, cookie recipes make so many, to the party to give away. You know, that's another neat way to kind of go, this is my favorite and I enjoy cooking it, but I don't want a lot of it left in the freezer on the way home. Cost of things going up, freezer section for your veggies just may be a cheaper way to go. You can take the coffee cup out, throw a teaspoon or water or two in it in the microwave if you're a microwave cooker and it'll be good to go. 
Sometimes the bag of potatoes is cheaper than buying one or two at a time. The trick with potatoes though is cold and dry, but not freezing. And so it's hard if you're in an apartment, there's not too many cool, dry places to leave the big bag. Um, and, and freezer space sometimes gets to be the challenge as well. So sometimes it is worth it, but when you're picking fruit or picking potatoes or picking vegetables, pick what you're gonna use. I can't tell you how many times my broccoli, because it was cheaper to buy it in the stock instead of just buying it already cut up so I can nibble, became the science experiment. Yeah, I'm kind of like, what's oh, smelling funny in the fridge? It's my broccoli, because it ended up in the back, because I didn't take the time to prep it and get it done when it came in the door. But that's creativity, and maybe that helps you get to enjoying the food. You know, or if you got friends and family coming for that big dinner, save a few things for them to do so that you can all participate in the craft. You know, because we don't do a lot of things that are craft. A lot of things keep us busy, but you know, um, just be prepared. Share. A lot of people don't like to share that they're having challenges and reaching out for support from family and friends. A lot of family and friends would love to help you out. They just don't know what would help you. So maybe that's a conversation that you can have during this time of the year too. Um, and we're, we're, we have diabetes care and education is available for people to dust off their plan maybe come touch base and just kind of say, hey, it's been a while since we talked about card counting or how to use those monitors or dusting off techniques with medication. Really, that sometimes over the years, you get into some things where maybe you're getting some scar tissue and you don't even notice it because we maybe never talked about it or we did. And it's a long time and a lot going on and you kind of forget about some of those things. Um, and, and really, I'm not the dietitian. I'm the nurse that helps you figure out how to put this all together and use the other pieces of life here with this. We have lots of lovely tools and tech and there's lots of help whether you like to use pencil and paper or you want to show me the neatest spreadsheet you invented that works for you. My job when you do a bring a food log or a blood sugar log is you tell me your plan. And then I take that look with you to say, how can we make the diabetes care and management, blood pressure and heart and kidney and stuff all work in how your life works. Doesn't work if I say, here's what you do. If I don't take into account, what are you able to do and what is your priority? You know, it's not my priority. It has to be yours to do it. But you can do these things, you know, pick one thing and literally it's one thing at a time and dust it off and say, hey, maybe this year I'm gonna put that second helping of vegetables on. Maybe it's, if I'm gonna go back for seconds, it'll be a second slice of the turkey or the ham or the meat. Um, maybe it's gonna be, I'm gonna march in place while I'm sitting, standing at the table, where you can hold on to something, please. We don't want anybody falling. You know, maybe it's gonna be the year that you kind of say, hey, it's time to go get a functional fitness thing at, um, the physical therapy to make sure that we're building those muscles for balance so we don't fall on the ice. And remember um, when Ben Miolo was presented a few times back, we lose muscle. So strength training will get us some muscle back, you know? So it's not just the food that we eat, but are we using those muscles? Even if it's only using your own body weight or the plates. You know, while you're drying, you could go up and down or turning left and rights and kind of put everyday things into, um, you incorporate those things just into everyday things. You know, meds need to go at the same time every day with your morning cup of coffee, maybe. You know, if we're going to add checking in in the afternoon and you always have a piece of fruit at that time, maybe put those two together. Hey, I'm hungry. What's going on? Grab a blood sugar once in a while, once in a while, check it out and see what's happening. Okay, great. 